Hi, I'm John Peters for Geo Veneer, and in this video, I'll show you how to apply veneer to a substrate using contact cement. Your substrate could either be MDF or plywood. I personally prefer plywood because it's structural, meaning it will hold a nail or a screw better than MDF. Let's get right into it, and as we work, I'll go over the list of tools and materials needed for this project. The contact cement that I'm using is Weldwood by DAP. This has a very strong smell, so open the windows and use a respirator. The substrate I'm using is 3 quarter inch birch plywood. You need to use a furniture grade plywood with a smooth surface because any imperfections in the surface of the plywood will telegraph through the veneer. The veneer that I'm using is white oak and it's a 10 mil paperback veneer. The veneer needs to overhang the surface that you're applying it to by about a quarter of an inch on all four sides. So since this piece of plywood measures 19 inches by 10 and 3 quarters, I'll cut the veneer at 11 and a quarter by 19 and a half. To cut the veneer, I'm using a sharp utility knife, a framing square, and you'll notice that I've clamped the square on this end to help prevent it from moving during the cut. It usually takes one or two, sometimes three scores. That one only took two. To apply the contact cement, I'll use a mohair roller. This is a fine nap roller for smooth surfaces. And I'll also have a throwaway brush just to clean off the lip of the can. Before I apply the contact cement, I want to give you a quick tip. It's good to elevate your veneer off of the work surface. And the reason for that is, let's say I don't do that, and I'm applying the contact cement, and a little gets on my work surface, and then the veneer shifts. Now I've got contact cement on the face of the veneer. So an easy way to avoid that is get a scrap piece of plywood, elevate the veneer off of the surface, and then you can work right to the edge. I like to line the paint tray with aluminum foil so I don't ruin the paint tray. And of course, you could just buy paint tray liners, but this is less expensive. Now that I've got everything ready to go, I'll open up the can, mix it up, and pour it in the tray. It's been about 15 minutes and the first coat of contact cement is dry. You know, some people only use one coat. I like to use two coats. It's what I was taught more than 30 years ago and it's what I've always done. I feel like the first coat really absorbs into the material and the second coat will give you a better bond. So I'm just going to apply the second coat in the same way I applied the first coat. It's been another 15 minutes and now the second coat of contact cement is dry. And the thing to know about contact cement is, contact cement is only going to stick to contact cement. So the way to position the veneer is to use sticks, in this case I'm using dowels and paint sticks. These do not have any contact cement on them, so they will not stick to the contact cement. And that will allow me to position the veneer to have an even reveal on all four sides. I have the veneer positioned and now I'll remove this back stick and apply pressure in the back and now I can lift the veneer up, pull this stick away, this one, and now I can apply a little pressure and put the veneer in place. Now the veneer is in position, but I need to apply more pressure. And the tool that you don't want to reach for is the J-roller. A lot of people will use this, but it's not the proper tool. What you should use is just a simple block of wood. Now I've taken this piece of poplar here, and I've softened the edge a little, simply so I don't scratch the veneer. And the way I did that was I used a sanding block and just took the sharpness off the edge. Now I'm going to work from the center, apply pressure, and work my way out. You do want to be careful near the edges, 
so you don't break them. Now the veneer is attached to the plywood with a good strong bond and you can see there's an overhang on all four sides and the next step is to trim it off with a flush cut bit in the router. Okay, well that's about all there is to it. It really is pretty simple to work with veneer. My advice is to start out with a small project, get the hang of it, and once you do, you'll realize that working with veneer really opens up all types of design possibilities because you don't have to worry about expansion and contraction in the same way that you do when you're working with solid wood. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're looking for veneer for your next project, be sure to visit our veneer gallery. As always, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.